This demonstration will be done on the Prototrack RMX control from Track Machine Tools. Uh, this will be the triangular pocket. We're going to machine uh, the triangle that you see on the left-hand side of your screen. We're going to machine that as a pocket. So to begin, let's start a program and we'll say go to begin. So this will be a pocket and it will be an irregular pocket. So we're going to begin at XY0, which I'm going to call the lower left corner. Uh, as you can see over here in the picture now, it's highlighted. That'll be my zero point. And I'm going to program this in a counterclockwise method so that my uh, one-way finishing cut would go as a climb cut. Uh, my Z-rapid, uh, my final depth, I'll do it in a single pass with a finish cut of 15 thousandths at 5,000 RPM to rough and 5,000 RPM to finish. Uh, I'm going to helix in at 40 inches a minute. I'm going to rough it at 85 inches a minute. I'm going to finish cut at 50 inches a minute using tool one to rough and a separate tool number two to finish. And I want to use three rest passes. Um, for my tools, uh, I'm going to use a, uh, a half inch for my roughing tool. And I don't have a, a quarter inch tool, so uh, I'm going to uh, make that a carbide, three flute, quarter inch. Then I'm going to just add this tool to my library. So I don't have to do that again. I can use that the next time I go to program. So my tools are set. I've got a rougher of half inch, a finisher of quarter. Uh, I have a start point at zero, zero. So I'm going to mill the bottom line, uh, which ends at four and zero, and it has a one eighth Conrad at the end of it. Now we're going to come up on the angle. Uh, it's not tangent to the previous. The X end would be at two, the halfway point, because you can see it's, it's uh, 50 degrees, 25 degrees, uh, both sides. So it meets in the center of, of this line right here. So that would be at X2, and the Y uh, is unknown, uh, but unnecessary because we know what the angle is. So when you have one endpoint and an angle, you don't need the other endpoint. Uh, at the top, we have a half-inch Conrad, and the angle itself would be 90 plus 25 degrees would be 115 degrees. And if you're not doing good at doing math in your head, you can hit the calculator here, and you can go 90 plus 25 equals 115. So I need to get that over there. I'll just push the abset key, and it popped it right in for me. Uh, I'm using offline, so I'm going to use the arrow key to go back, and I can show you how little information we use just to, uh, to get that to work. Uh, now I need to get from here back to where I started. That's a simple mill move, non-tangent, ending at zero with a 1 8 Conrad at the end and move on. So we'll end this AGE now. We're done. Uh, and now we want to machine this as a pocket. We've already set up our tools, uh, the half inch to rough, the quarter inch to finish. So I'm just going to run the uh, tool path and see what it looks like. Uh, see what the defaults that I've set up is going to give me, whether, whether I want, choose to use this pattern or not. And I don't really care for that pattern. There's too much lifting going on. Uh, so I'm going to go to, into my program, and I'm going to tell it to go to event one, which is the start of the irregular program. Come into my options, and my cutting method, I'm going to switch from one way to zigzag. In other words, a uh, combination of climb and conventional milling. And just look at it now, um, the tool path. Let's see uh, what this does. So I get a minute 53 second run time. Uh, you notice that it's, it's helixed in and done a, a very nice job of picking uh, a point of entry. Uh, I like to uh, pick a point of entry myself if, if this doesn't do uh, the adequate job where 
whereby it's going to circle out, it's going to circle cut out from that point. So I want to look at where the most meat is and tell it to start there. Uh, if I want to change that for any particular reason, I can go into my program, go into options, and I can turn on my start location. When I do that, you see it puts new points in here uh, to start at. So I might start at X of, say, 2 and Y of 1. And look at my toolpath now. Point is that you can control your point of entry. So I don't like that, you know, as much as what I did, what the system picked on its own. So I'll, I will change it back. But know that you are able to adjust your program so that you're not forced to start where the software thinks you should start. You can start it wherever you think you should start. So let me just go back into the options, and I'll turn that uh, start location off. Go back into my toolpath. And that's a minute 53 seconds. Probably going to be all right. Let's have a look and see what it looks like in Verify. Go to Setup, Verify. And now if we define our stock, uh, with the offline, I'll show you a little trick. You can, If you push your F2 button, watch these numbers expand. And then I'm just going to make the top of my part zero. So it just puts a little more meat around the outside of the part. And make the part. I'll slow it down just a bit so you can get a look at the, uh, the entry. And then the nice big sweeping arcs, arcs that we get from our helical entry point. I'll slow that down so you can see it. See how it's making big sweeping arc moves? When you're making big sweeping arc moves, your feed rate is going as, as fast as what you programmed. In, as the arcs get smaller, it's going to the program will automatically adjust the feed rate to keep the chip load on the cutter constant. This makes for very, very little tool wear, tool pressure. So it's easy on the tool, it's easy on the machine, and it's not throwing heat into the part. And those are some pretty big benefits for the adaptive machining. I'll speed you up just a bit. Get that cleaned up, and then it's going to change tools. Now there's this is a, there's a, a half inch tool is going to leave quarter inch radii in these two corners, and I've told it to uh, come in with the quarter inch cutter, do the rest machining. You can see here it's taking that material out. So that when it comes to do the finish pass with this tool, there's an even amount of stock left for the finished cutters, not coming into that quarter inch cut with a quarter inch cutter. That would be too much and would likely ruin the, the look of that corner. So it's got the rough meat out. Now it's doing just a little finish pass on the, uh, on the part. And we're all done. Come out pretty nice. Thanks so much for watching the video.